Welcome to Kernersville, North Carolina, for tonight's Carolina Classic Fair Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week, presented by Wash Shore Home. It's the Bishop McGinnis Villains with a new coaching staff, new expectations. They host the Goliaths of high school football here in the Carolinas. Community School of Davidson, three and one start. And now we get all set for football. Let's see if the villains can play the role of villain tonight and upset Davidson. We welcome you to George Repass Field with the former Catawba offensive lineman, Mark Colbert. I'm Evan Budgervich. Davidson's won league games in 10 straight years, winning the table. How does Bishop McGinnis play the spoiler tonight and keep this game entertaining? Oh, you got to come out with authority early on, right? I mean, this is a team in CS Davidson that really likes to air the ball out, push the ball down the field, and put a lot of points on the board. And a banged up unit in Bishop McGinnis is going to have their hands full, but it's got to be a next man up mentality here tonight for the villains. Bishop McGinnis welcomes a brand new coaching staff, and Hannah Brady explains more. Guys, after building a football program from scratch, head coach Mark Holcomb decided it was time for another project. In December, he became the new head coach and athletic director for the Villains after longtime head coach Charlie Jones retired at the end of last season. Holcomb also opened Oak Grove in 2017 and went 39-15 and for the Grizzlies. In years prior, he also spent 13 seasons with North Davidson High School. Planning on retiring in January, he found himself here at Bishop McGinnis High School. He told me yesterday that he was retired for about eight weeks until he knew it was time to get back to work. Now, after his 31 years of coaching, he's decided it's time to spend more time here at Bishop McGinnis and is excited to spend some time with this group. And maybe in the future, he'll get the chance to travel. Guys. Bishop McGinnis coach Mark Holcomb noted the last two weeks losses by one score. They want to prove the doubters wrong tonight and upset C.S. Davidson. We'll have kickoff and starting lineups when we return to Kernersville, North Carolina, right after this for our Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week. Field. And with that, Number welcome three. back to Kernersville. Minutes away from kickoff. C.S. Davidson, Bishop McGinnis. Great news. The forecast has played nice tonight. Here's a look at tonight's Skywatch weather game forecast for ABC News 45. The chief meteorologist on the call here, Jonathan Went. Look at that, Mark. 73 at kick. Gets in the low 60s. It's the first week of fall, it feels like, around here. It just feels like it doesn't. There's a freshness in the air, a nice little breeze going across the field. This is finally football weather. And in week five of the high school football season, that's a pretty good turn. Middle of September gets a little toasty some down, sometimes down here in North Carolina, but we have a perfect evening of football in store for you tonight. Mark, it's a battle of offense versus defense tonight. And if you're C.S. Davidson, Connor Ferguson slinging the football around, 
like many in the state, 12 touchdown passes in the first three weeks. How does he carry the load offensively? Boy, he's a gunslinger, and I think sometimes you're going to have those guys that are going to force balls into coverage, get the ball down the field. Good news for him is he's going to have plenty of opportunities to put that ball in the air and spin it. It's an air raid offense that likes to push the ball down the field. Connor Ferguson is the engine that makes it go. He's going to have a lot of opportunities tonight. And you can't really talk about this defense for Bishop McGinnis without really looking at one of their linebackers. That's Isaac Ross. This guy is a ball hawk. As good as they come, great work ethic, great instincts. And this is a player that Coach Mark Holcomb really loves to have as his leader on defense. And Isaac Ross had 17 tackles last week. If Bishop McGinnis is going to keep this game close, they need Ross locked into them. Oh, he's a, he's a machine. And, and that really is what it comes down to at the end of the day. He's one of those guys instinctually you can count on. And he's going to need to make a lot of those plays that he made last week tonight if the villains have a chance of coming away with a win. Loving God, we ask you to be present to these young athletes from Bishop McGinnis and the community school of Davidson on this evening. Let them play with great vigor, but fairly. But competition makes them strong, but never hostile. Grant them moments to rejoice, but not in the adversity of others. Keep them safe from injury. Help them learn something that truly matters when the game is over. But always let them remember that football is simply a game. If through this game, they set an example for another, let it be one of true sportsmanship and respect for each other's gifts and abilities. Protect our troops both here and overseas as they defend our freedom. God bless America. Amen. Here in Kernersville, Bishop McGinnis and those students are fired up tonight. Mark, let's dive into our keys to this matchup because C.S. Davidson has dominated this series in the last five years. You noting the passing game of the Spartans. How does that play a factor tonight? Well, it's just one of those things where we know they're going to put the ball in the air. It's an air raid offense. They can sprinkle in the run wherever they want to, but it's about airing this football out, getting it down the field, and getting your playmakers in space when they do catch the ball. Those eyes in the future had a rough game last week coming off their first loss of the season. How do you respond and how do you get back into the win column? It's going to be important tonight for the Spartans of Davidson. And this is a league opener for these two schools. So you note the eyes on the future and then for the villains, the home squad, how do they pressure that passing game? Well, you got just got to get pressure. Realistically, be creative with your blitzes. However it may be, you're not going to get back to them necessarily with three down linemen, four down linemen, whatever it is. You got to cre get creative, get into the backfield and force some pressure on Ver Ferguson in this passing game. Get back to basics across the board. Play fundamental football. You got a chance to come away with a win tonight. There's Coach Mark Holcomb, who was noted in the open, moved from Oak Grove after retirement. Now he's at Bishop McGinnis, really revamping this program. He's a man who's had high hopes. He's been walking the hallways to find players, and that's been the challenge for Mark, of building confidence in this young team. you got to think if there is a head coach in the area that can do that, though, as far as starting fresh, going to a new landscape, and getting guys in your program, it's Mark Holcomb. We saw him do it for several years at Oak Grove. Who founded the Oak Grove program. Exactly, and they were very successful. Last year went undefeated in the regular season before losing in the playoffs 
So he knows how to build a winning program. It's just going to be steps to getting there. And he knows this is just another part in the process, getting the guys to believe buy-in and then find a way to win games. Facing another veteran coach, T.J. Albert, in year 12 as a head coach. The this Field, community Guzman. school of Davidson has run the table in this 2A conference. Houston, Five Houston, straight Houston, undefeated uh, conference seasons. Carson. And now we get set for our Hayes Jeweler kickoff. Four, Hayes Jewelers of Lexington, the king of diamonds since 1939. And with that, Azael Guzman ready to send one away. Here we go, Spartans versus Villains. And this game is off. That's a great kick into the end zone. So our first look at C.S. Davidson, who scored 62 points when these teams met last year. The wide receiver tandem of Tanner Mullins and Brandon Albert, two captains. What a special unit on the outside. Boy, you got to watch out for those two on the outside. Again, an air raid offense. They're going to put the football in the air. Not want to. They are in between McClure, Mullins, and Albert, 3, 4, and 5. They have a trio of wide receivers who, do, who can do damage at all three levels of the defense. It's as easy as one, two, three for this offense. Albert, 14 catches, 220 yards last year when these teams met. He's the son of the head coach, TJ Albert. Now our first look at Connor Ferguson, the senior quarterback, who was a former baseball player, first year playing football. And a whistle before our first snap. Here's our first look at Bill Kroom, our lead referee. C.S. Davidson noted this week penalties have been a bugaboo, especially in the loss to Forest Hills last week in their lone loss. And one of the best teams in the state at their level. Forest Hills really gave this Davidson team a challenge. Again, how do they respond here tonight? Not a great start. Albert in motion. He catches the pass. And a short gain there for Albert. Gets four yards, and he's brought down by Isaac Ross, the player to watch coming in at linebacker. It's a young defensive line, but an experienced linebacking core. Ross, the junior, Ropko, the running back, and another stud linebacker. Yeah, I mean, they are stout across that second level with the linebacking core they have. Second and ten. Ferguson loves to let it fly, and it's dropped. Albert couldn't squeeze it. Good coverage, though, by this Bishop McGinnis defense. Good coverage and a really great throw. Found a spot in the zone. Albert did a great job of finding that soft spot. Ferguson delivers a great ball in between three different Villains defenders. Albert just may have turned his eyes upfield just too soon. Couldn't corral that one. Nice pressure there by Mario Lanza, the senior defensive lineman. Here's a third and ten for Davidson. Ferguson to pass. He's got all the time in the world. Here's the deep shot, and Albert couldn't squeeze it. Great coverage on the back end by this McGinnis defense. That's Aiden Martin on the stop. Can't help but think right now, Brandon Albert might just be getting to himself a little bit here. You can see the reaction after the first catch. He was frustrated, can't come down with this one, and then gets into frustration again. Got to be able to stay within yourself, play composed. He's still upset there. Again, two drops early on in this game already, but. He's a talented player. He can get back to it. He just has to have that mental fortitude. There's a low snap to Champion, who boots it away. And not a very good punt for Davidson. It will take a bounce for the Spartans and die there at the 40. So Bishop McGinnis is without two starting offensive linemen tonight. Worth noting, Kayla Martin left tackle. Alexander Longcar, the captain at right tackle, is out. So how does Alex Waterfield, the junior quarterback, lead this charge tonight? Well, you got to understand, they're going to probably bring more pressure now. They're going to recognize that your two starting tackles aren't in the football game. And there's going to be some pressure that potentially comes from the edge. You have to manage that, see where it's coming from, and deliver a good football down the field. Here's a fresh set of downs. It's a handoff that gets right back to the line. Not much room to run against this Davidson defense. Big player right in the middle is Zach Albert, the linebacker. And then Oliver Morris, the D lineman, a big threat of this C.S. Davidson defense. Just a clogger right there in the middle. Able to really sniff out the run, play it well, and also has good coverage ability. Heath Ropko, the tailback next to Waterfield. Who gets the rock again. He's going nowhere quickly. And that defensive line with Albert and company in on the stop. You can tell that's exactly where the focal point's going to be. Again, you recognize the two tackles are out of the game. What do you do? You bring pressure. 
and until the offensive front can manage a way to find these defenders and get bodies on them to allow their running backs to run in space. That's exactly what's going to happen. That was a good blitz by the linebacker there, Gordon Anderson coming in. Setting up third and 11 for Waterfield. Alex under siege, heaves it deep and throws it out of bounds. He was searching for Aiden Martin. And now a decision here on fourth down. Christian McGinnis will send out the punting crew. I think that's a pretty good decision. Really nice coverage down the sideline that time by Stefan Jacoby Morgan. It was airtight on the sideline, stuck to the receiver's hip that time, forces a ball to be thrown out of bounds. It's a really nice job pinning the receiver to the sideline, not allowing them to have any room to work. Guzman to punt, gets it away. Well, this is a short punt. It'll actually bounce the wrong direction. And finally stopped by Kilgarf, the long snapper. We'll take the timeout. Couple of punts early in a low scoring first quarter here in Kernersville. Closed captioning for tonight's game is brought to you by Caring Hands at Caring Hands Home Health. We understand that your happiness of your loved ones is important to their wellness. There are mental health awareness weeks all across the country here with Suicide Prevention Awareness Week coming up. It's important to keep tabs on the student athletes tonight. Connor Ferguson back to work, second drive, and he hands it off. That is trapped in the backfield. Noah Wilkinson jumped on top for the sack. Shot through the gap that time, then he just gets right into the backfield, slicing through that offensive line. Wash does not get fooled by the trap there at all. What an excellent play in the backfield. And then little Derek Murphy snuck in. The undersized safety also on the tackle. This defense is flying around tonight. They got to get in the backfield again, pressure this offense. Now a second and long. Ferguson flings it left. That is caught. Tanner Mullins jumps up. He gets 15. Already seen Albert a couple times. Now Mullins, his first target of the game, and he is a dynamic player at the wide receiver position. A big body, as you can see, goes up, climbs a ladder, snares that football out of the air. Tanner Mullins ranks fourth in the state in receiving yards. He's off to a good start. And this first down carry is not. A little wrestling tackle there from the defensive lineman Mario Lanza. Lanza actually pulling double duty tonight, moving up to that right tackle spot. In is that Rick Rains, little WWE yeah. tear down there? But you see, he's, he's, a, he's a valuable player. Again, dynamic along that defensive line. Second and 10. Ferguson all the time in the world, but misses his target. He was searching for Mullins and couldn't find him. You can see right now what Bishop McGinnis is doing. They're relying on that defensive front to get back there and apply that pressure and dropping seven or eight guys back in coverage. Blanket the field. Don't open up passing windows. C.S. Davidson lost its game last week, 21-14. Faced zone coverage all night. They're seeing it here on third and 11. Ferguson with some pressure to the sticks, and it's caught. Mullins bobbled it to himself, and he gets 20 yards. What a reception. Great hand-eye coordination. Yeah, sure was. Not the best ball delivered by Ferguson down the field. Got it to his receiver, and that's the job that you have to do. A little bit of pressure gets to him, but really nice job by Mullins. Concentrate, watch the football into his hands, and bring it in. That was a 15-yard gain to move it on the Crescent Ford first down. Offense that likes to stretch the field, and you can see it right now. They're taking their shots down the field already. This is play six for Ferguson. 
Already 12 passing touchdowns for the junior. Ferguson with time over the middle. And there's Albert Brandon, the son, with the catch. His dad, TJ, the head coach, said, we want to work on Brandon's week in and week out ability. Well, you see right there, he's already had two drops on that first drive. Comes back to him, makes the catch this time. There's some no huddle offense for Ferguson. Four receivers. Ferguson slings it short and overshoots Albert, setting up third and three. A little too tall. You can see with Ferguson's point right now, he's going a little bit taller. So his receivers are having to go up and adjust to that. And that time, Albert just too tall for him on the outside, trying to make an out route to the Bishop McGinnis sideline. Ferguson last week, 20 of 39. He struggled in the loss to Forest Hills. And Coach T.J. Albert said, we have to find easy completions for him tonight. Well, they're allowing him to drop back right now. That pressure needs to get home. Here's a third and three for Ferguson. It's a handoff. Maholland. look at Riley break loose. Off a tackle and the opening touchdown for Davidson. Riley Milholland on the carry. Touchdown, Spartans. What a start on the second drive. 20 yards of ease for the touchdown. I would consider us both fooled by that, right? This is an offense. Hey, coach told us we don't really run it unless we absolutely need to or we have an opportunity to. That time they see an opportunity on third and short and cash in from a couple of yards out, get the nice touchdown, and we Champions have drawn first blood in this matchup. Here's the extra point from Carnero. And pardon me, that's Champion who misses the extra point, but an efficient drive for C.S. Davidson. First running play of the drive, too. Nice, easy run that time. Good identification of where the defense was lined up. Good hole opens up around the right side. Man, what a run by Mahalan. Just getting off, breaking a tackle, and bouncing it to the edge for the score. Eight plays, 56 yards. Very efficient. Faced a couple of third downs and able to move the chains there. And what did T.J. Albert said this week? We're not going to run the ball a lot, but when we do, they love Mahalan in the backfield. Well, it, you're rushing with a meaning. Instead of just rushing to rush and gain yards and, and wear the defense down, like a lot of offenses tend to, they're running with a purpose and that they will run when they see an opportunity to do it, but it's not their first choice. So you see where the defense is lined up. Backside opens up for Mulholland. No one's home until he gets inside the five. And at that point, it was too late to stop the first down, only a touchdown to go. And of course, he got that after bouncing it out to the outside. It's not an offense that you have to remove the idea in your head that they're going to run the ball. I mean, Mulholland now has five touchdowns on the year after that one. So he is a dynamic threat in the backfield, just not utilized like in a traditional running back sense. So Grayson Champion, the football player, the soccer player, and the lacrosse attacker, little three-sport stud to send this away. Here's a short kick. This is a live ball and a booming hit. Oh, my goodness. Let's hope that Saunders is OK. Because Patrick Graves, or pardon me, Lane McClure dropped the wood. Well, goes up, makes the catch, but at that point in time, you got to throw that hand up, call for a fair catch, have them lay off of you. I thought that might have been helmet to helmet there as well. It was close. Very, very close. Instead, a big drive here for Alex Waterfield from his 38. There's a handoff. Nice hole. And a big running room there for the new tailback for Bishop McGinnis. That's Isaac Ross. And we have a whistle. Throwfield by Isaac Ross, tackled by number 28, Gordon Anderson. Isaac Ross has less than 10 carries this year. Gives you a sense of the change of pace in the backfield. But we do have a flag. Seven and five. So that play did not count. It is a false start. It was a very late flag. It was. But going back to that last run, already highlighted Mario Lanza on the defensive side. He's stepping in at right tackle. Nice hole opened up that time. Gave him a good gain. Now they're just looking at a first and 15 instead. Waterfield sends a man in motion. That's Aiden Martin. He feeds it back to the back, and that's going nowhere. Oliver Morris on the stop. 
who is described as a mini Hercules, undersized, but he's beefy on that defensive line. Yeah, he is looking right there, just strutting his stuff, getting under there. Knows how to play with leverage, very quick inside. See him wait patiently on the runner to come across. And think of the Miami Dolphin Hall of Famer, Jason Taylor. Not the largest human being, but so effective with his size. Well, it's all about technique. When you don't have the physical attributes on your side as far as like size, reach, length, everything like that, you got to be sound as far as technique is concerned. Oliver Morris may be one of those guys, a little undersized on the defensive line, but really great technique and very smart. And led the team with 104 tackles last year on the defensive line, mind you. Here on second and long, quarterback escapes. Waterfield needs some help, and he's sacked. There's Zach Albert on the stop. Came in like a heat-seeking missile, not fooled by the play action. Rolling outside is Waterfield, and oh, really nowhere to go. Albert had him dead to rights there. What an important third and long here for Bishop McGinnis. Fresh off a one-point loss. It's third and 20. They have to get basically to midfield to move the chains. Here comes pressure. No one picked up the blitz. The screen is incomplete. And that was a free man on a mission towards the quarterback, Angelo Lee. And someone's got a chip on those screen plays. You want to at least delay that defensive front and then let them go. Draw them into the quarterback. But that time, no one. Gets a hand on Lee before he gets back into the backfield. Waterfield has to rush it. And really thankful that there was no one there defensively to intercept that football. Second punt for Guzman. Here's a fair catch. And Mullins brings it in. We'll take the timeout. C.S. Davidson off the touchdown going back to work. Up by six in this league opener. It is a whiteout in the pit tonight. The student section here at Bishop McGinnis. Walk the campus today. Growing up Roman Catholic, I love the good ch chapel and service. Walking through main campus. K through 12 education. Really neat facilities here. Oh, beautiful. I mean, absolutely beautiful. Passed by a couple of the areas while we took a, a stroll around before the game. Krispy Kreme uh, gym was, was our auto. Your eyes were on the donuts. My oh, eyes were on the court. Naturally. And C.S. Davidson back to work. Fresh off a 56-yard touchdown drive. Now Connor Ferguson on first down, feeds Brandon Albert. Look at this end around. And a first down. For more on Ferguson, we go down to Hannah Brady. Guys, senior quarterback Connor Ferguson has only played four games of football in his life. He didn't grow up playing flag football or Pop Warner. Ferguson, a pitcher and a third baseman for the Spartans baseball team, came up to Coach Albert one day and said, I think I want to try and play football. From what Coach Albert has described and what we've seen tonight, he has a big arm and is a mentally tough player, guys. Now he gets him inside the 10, a little connection there to Albert. And think about that, a former pitcher, former third baseman turned stud quarterback. Well, you can see where the arm certainly comes from. And Hannah, right on time, really, with that report, saying the big arm displays it while she's doing that report and shows it off there. Goes right back down the field. Accurate pass down the field again. Here's a first and goal. Albert in motion. Gets the football. Albert sprints up. And the son of the head coach cashes in his first touchdown. That is a bang hard apparel touchdown. Go hard with bang hard apparel after a very quick 60 yard drive. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to the Brandon Albert section of our show. Touch on first down, gets a long catch on, on the second play of the drive and the third play 
Cashes it in another jet sweep for a touchdown. So all three plays go to number five in white and blue. He makes the defense pay. There's Grayson Champion. This time he sneaks the extra point through. And what a start after the punt. Two drives, two effective drives there for C.S. Davids. Uh, well, that one, I don't even know if you'd say is effective. Just a lightning strike. Three plays down the field in, in a hurry. 30 seconds. Yep. In an absolute hurry, but you saw everything on display. The versatility of these wide receivers. That time only in Brandon Albert. Saw the arm of Ferguson, who really, if you talk about him, Evan, this is a guy as a senior who has never played a year of football in his life before this year. And that's the credit to the head coach right there, T.J. Albert, whose son, Brandon, we noted on the touchdown. Mm -hmm. T.J. is a Northeast guy. He moved from California 10 years ago to coach this program, founded the football team. Now they've run the table five straight years in this 2A conference. Well, they are the team to beat. I don't think that's not just an understatement, but it's, it's quite obvious in what they've done, the success that they have had. And T.J. is just a guy that you... You really feel when we talk to him, he's a guy you want to play for, right? Like, they're very straightforward with you, but not in a harsh way. And really takes in mind how he endears himself to his players, not just as a coach, but as a man, and really is helping them develop, and not just on the field, but off of it as men. He coaches the baseball team that's made the state tournament, and he's doing a great job with the football team. 69 and 57 career record. There's another short pooch kick, fair catch that time. Smart decision from J.R. Saunders. Learn from last time, don't you think? So given the offensive line woes with Martin and Longcar, the tackles out tonight, how does McGinnis give more time for the quarterback? Well, I, I think you've got to do something to offset this rush right now, and the most natural way to do it is a quick passing game. Now just be aware of where if they don't rush and where they have guys drop back at, still be aware of that. But one way to negate that pass rush is a quick passing game, and hopefully we see them get back to that on this drive. Here's Alex Waterfield handing it off on first down and a tackle in the backfield. Look at Angelo Lee diving in. Well, Lee crossed the 100 career tackle mark last week and the way he flies to the football, that's impressive. Well, not just him, but everybody. Right now you're seeing this Davidson defense. They're flying around the field and they are going with a purpose. They're tracking down these ball carriers and bringing them to the ground. Now a second and 10. Bishop McGinnis averaged 28 points a game entering tonight. Let's see if they can inject some life into this crowd. Waterfield to hand off. Good hole for Ropko. And he gets four back. That was Miguel, uh, Michael Tejada. I almost said Miguel Tejada of the Orioles. Michael Tejada, <laughs> no relation on the tackle. Miguel Tejada. Hey, nice run that time, though. Again, finding a hole in the offensive line. A good hole that time. Really nice job finding it and finishing the run off in a tough manner. Now you give yourself a chance on third and medium. Waterfield on third and five. Keeps it, slings to the wrong team. Intercepted going the other way. Tanner Mullins for the pick six. C.S. Davidson is cooking, now up three scores. Set it right at the beginning of the drive. Nullify the pass rush with a quick passing game, but be aware of where the defenders are. That time pressure gets home. Waterfield has to get the ball out of his hands to avoid a sack. And throws it right into the waiting arms and hands of Mullins. That was a 35-yard pick six. And Mullins was jogging. He was all by himself. Oh, absolutely. The only one that was going to catch him was his teammate. And I believe that was Albert. If the extra point hits our... Our camera op, good thing he's okay. You got to check on the cam ops from time to time. That's Lewis up there. And that pressure right there. There's Lewis's angle of the shot, by the way. Yep. Davidson just getting crashing down, blowing that play up in the backfield. Waterfield had nowhere to go. And there are times where you just have to eat it. It's going to end the drive, but you just have to eat it instead of making a mistake like that. That's just part of the learning curve for this, this program, this offense, everybody across the board. Good job, Carlos, tracking that shot, our high cam here today. And that's going to make T.J. Albert a happy camper. Because T.J. noted in the loss to Forest Hills, his team's as athletic as any team in the state. they got to play consistent, though, and we're seeing it tonight. Oh, we sure are. Uh, across all real phases, we haven't seen much of the special teams just yet. But offensively, had two, two touchdown drives, now an interception return for a touchdown on defense. So they are rolling like we know they can. This is a team that has the expectation of defending their title that they have defended for the last several seasons within this conference, and they don't really seem to have any shot signs of letting off the gas here and slowing down. 
C.S. Davidson, impressive last year, 10 and 2, but 6 and 0 in the league with five wins with running clocks in the second half. That might be the case tonight. 20 nothing here early, and Champion sends one deep. That's returnable. Here's a hole for Martin. He goes the other way, and he hit the brakes. He gets stopped inside the 20. Good tackle by Gordon Anderson. I like the idea of trying to reverse back across the field, but credit Davidson. Pursuing the football, not giving up on the return just because it went away from your side of the field and able to stop that before it really got going back the other way. Josh Resignalo, the OC, first year run in this offense. He's got a steep challenge. He was a former head coach in the Arena League with the Winston-Salem squad. Now trying to guide Martin on this jet sweep. Martin, though, can't get outside. And look who spins him down, Oliver Morris. He's all over the field. Well, it's just all these defenders right now, right? Like, you can see the team speed for Davidson right now. They're flying across the field, getting into the backfield. And again, once they're getting to those ball carriers, they are finishing plays. No, there are no broken tackles able to bring these ball carriers to the ground. They are finishing one-on-one. -on -one. Bishop again is still in the negative yardage in this first quarter. Have some work to do on second and 15. This will help. Quarterback keeps it, and he gets hit hard after a gain of two. Angela Lee there, the first to tackle him. When you find yourself down 20 already here in the first quarter, no less, but you can't abandon the run game. Stay balanced. Work through this. Find what works, and then start going to that a little bit more. Fresh off what Mark Holcomb said was his best week of practice for the quarterback, Alex Waterfield. He's in some trouble now, third and 13. Here comes pressure. Intercepted again. Jacob Morgan is brought down. Stefan Jacob Morgan with the pick. Well, I'm not 100% sure which receiver that was supposed to be going to. Just a little too high underneath from Waterfield and just over the top. And Boy, Morgan was sitting there waiting for that football to go over the top. Here, two receivers just kind of sat down in the same general area. A little too tall, goes right into the waiting hands of Morgan. The C.S. Davidson defense, two picks, now six on the year. And we're just four weeks into the season. Ferguson back on the ground, Albert cuts inside. Albert breaks another, and look at Albert score his second touchdown. This man can't be stopped as the captain cashes in from inside of 20. Doesn't really seem like those two drops on the first drive are affecting him much now, does it, Evan? Nice run again. We heard he's a Swiss Army knife within this offense, and you can already see it. Long pass on the last drive and scored on a jet sweep on that drive as well. Now does it a second time. Gets on the board for the second time. That was a 13-yard rushing touchdown. And now champion in for the extra point. He's got it. Nine seconds. Scoring drives of 30 seconds, obviously the pick, and then nine seconds. It's right there, just a handoff. Straight up the middle. So we've seen him take jet sweeps, catch the football, going out for routes. And of course now running the football straight up as a running back. What, a, a very what an nice. extension, the dive. Yep. Looks like Wes Welker out there running the football. A little shifty. Slip steps, good footwork, right? There's dad TJ who refuses to give his son credit. <laughs> Although Brandon now has multiple Power 5 and FBS offers. Oh, he, he did acknowledge this week, like, hey, I got to start realizing he's getting all these Division 1 offers. I got to start giving him credit. Like, this kid's a pretty good football player. It's, and it's hard, right? Like, you're a dad. You're a dad first, right? And you're a coach second. So in that breath, you want to be proud of him, but you also don't want them to become complacent. And, and what does his son call him? TJ. TJ, hey. The whole team calls him uh, TJ. Exactly. Coach Tej. Like TJ from The Challenge. Oh. If you watch that show on MTV. I was thinking more of a Bravo guy. As his kickoff bounces, Martin brings it out. He's going sideways, and he's tripped up <laughs> inside the 15. Good stop by Aiden Davies, one of the safeties for Davidson. They are so fast. The team speed is really the thing that's that stood out to me so far, Evan. Just how fast they are around the field, closing in on guys, making plays, whether it's offensively or defensively, special teams now coming into play. They are all over the field so far here in the first quarter. Let's see if Alex Waterfield can orchestrate a drive. 
Down four scores. Morris right in the backfield. And we noted the two starting offensive linemen down, but it's going to be hard to run the football tonight. Oh, sure is. And right now, this is a defense that has its ears pinned back. They're bringing pressure. And right now, they just cannot do any wrong. Oliver Morris found the hole, was left wide open. He came in unblocked to blow that play up in the backfield. Nine rushes, seven yards for Bishop McGinnis. Negative seven yards, in fact. So we hit the two-minute mark of this first quarter. Waterfield to throw, a little pump fake. Uh-oh, he's sacked. Ball loose. And this will be a touchdown. That's a big man touchdown for Michael Tejada. Look at the big man rumble. Waterfield is just getting the pocket collapsed on him right now. And really credit. I have some bad news for you, Mark. It has been ruled down inside the one yard line. Oh, no. And remember, no instant replay at the high school football level. And Tejada goes, wait a second. <laughs> I was across the goal line. I grabbed it in the end zone. Oh, Oh, it's man. ruled intentional grounding. Thank you for the explanation, Bill Kroom. Although Tejada now in the Greensboro triad area will have that on video for the rest of his life. Sure will. And he'll swear he'll tell you it was a touchdown. Back in my day, son. <laughs> I scooped and scored that thing so hard. But again, the pocket just getting back there, the pressure being applied on Waterfield. It's just tough right now. This pressure is unrelenting. So did he throw this football? Oh, the tuck rule. This is Tom Brady 2.0 against the Raiders. Look at the strength by Waterfield. And then Tejada, who's probably playing more like Jenga than defensive line, he grabs the, the lucky football. I saw the football come out, just rolls right into his hands. Bishop McGinnis must get to the 22. Here's a little pilgrimage movement that pushes the pile a quarter of a yard. And now this is not the fun time to punt on fourth and forever. Well, you can bet there's going to be pressure brought. Off the edge, right up the middle. C.S. Davidson is going to bring pressure. Try to either block this punt or knock it out of the back of the end zone for a potential safety. So you got to think, you're snapping this ball, and as soon as you catch it, you are punting. There's no wind-up. You don't take steps. This is Fear Factor 2.0. Yeah. yeah. Look at this angle <laughs> for Guzman, who's a former soccer player, learned football this summer. Oh, no, there's a safety. <laughs> so the villains give up the, the two-pointer there. Right now, it's it's not your night. Another mishap for the villains of Bishop McGinnis. Snap just goes straight over their punter's head. Remember, the snapper is also the left tackle who has had to move back and forth. Mm. Mario Lanza, who also plays defensive line. So Coach Holcomb joined, joked, we need some more timeout breaks to give my snapper a chance tonight. And Coach Holcomb's work used to our presence being around him. Third year in a row we've had him on Friday Night Rivals, so... He's familiar with the process, understands that the game slows down exponentially when you've got TV here, you've got your TV timeouts. So it's a different ball game, almost literally, but uh, his, his villains have some work to do to get back into this one in any way. And remember, because of the safety, you have to punt the ball back. Mm. So Davidson will get the ball one more time, and the villains need some players. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right, someone just ran off. Now we need the tee because you can actually kick this off from a tee. So Guzman will come back into your picture. What a busy night for a sale, Guzman. Four punts. Had to catch a couple snaps over his head. And now he kicks the ball off. Stefan Jacoby Morgan is back to receive, along with the speedster Tanner Mullins. Good kick there by Guzman. Returnable, Morgan. He's got a convoy of blockers and cuts the other way. With a couple of flags down, nice stop. 
by Jackie Davis. Let's see what the flag is here. That's a block in the back there. Bill Kroom explaining. So this will actually be C.S. Davidson's worst starting field position. Mark, I know the score is a little out of hand, but if you're Davidson offensively, what do you want to take out of this drive in a tough field position off a penalty? Well, I think just really executing well. We've seen some rough play a little bit out of the quarterback position with Connor Ferguson right now. Some balls that have been thrown a little too wide, too high. Find a way to really start honing in on your skill converting. Again, this is a guy who's playing his first year of football ever as a senior, so there's going to be some growing pains, but work on your craft a little bit on this drive. Ferguson back to work on first and 10. He's found Albert twice for touchdowns. Look at this deep shot. Going for Mullins, who adjusts and can't bring it in. Excellent coverage, though, by Patrick Graves, one of the twin brothers out there in coverage. Yeah, absolutely. Just way to track the ball. Hangs up a little bit too much. Talking about some of those fundamentals for Ferguson, but hangs up too much. Mullins able to track the ball. Watch Graves just stick his hand up there, disrupt the vision of Mullins, force a contested catch, can't bring it down. Remember last year's starter, A.J. Sirianni, 52 passing touchdowns. He has graduated and now actually comes back on campus and helps coach the former baseball third baseman, Connor Ferguson, who never played football until this summer. Ferguson showing some arm strength, nearly picked. Man, this Graves brother, those two are working well together, three and eight. They sure are. Read that one well, broke on it. Just not a lot of speed on that out throw. And those are the toughest throws. A lot of quarterbacks will tell you they have to make those long throws across the field. Graves reads it well, just cannot corral that football. Maybe Patrick, or excuse me, Mullen sticking his hand in there to break that one up a little bit. Twin brothers, Nick Graves teaming up with Patrick Graves. So here's the first third and 10 for Davidson. Blitz coming, quarterback scrambles. Here's the blitz. That pass is short. Hetwer is stubbed out. Brandon Hetwer, the tight end. 6-5 with a Maryland offer this week. Yeah, it looks like the offense is going to stay there. Nice, easy throw. A little bit of pressure coming from the backside, but Ferguson able to continue to roll and get away from it. Complete and you see pass. the conversation there between Ferguson and, and the Albert family. Yeah. Not the Adams family, but yeah, the next I'll, best family here in the triad. Yeah, the, the Adams family here in the triad? This punt is sent away. Carnero, and a fair catch there, the 27. So a little PB&J of back-to-back -back stops at the start of the game in the most recent drive. But look at that, live play analysis getting tablets with every play after that. That's college football right there. It sure is, but it's something we've seen a little bit more across the high school landscape here in North Carolina over the last couple of years. You've got to keep up with, with different technologies now. It's becoming easier than ever to have those sort of devices and those, uh, let's say, apps on the sidelines so that you can get instant feedback on what you're doing, what the feed looks like from up above. And with Clinton looming as the best team in 2A yeah. football, this is more about scouting your playoff opponents than winning tonight. Yeah, absolutely. We have a whistle here and a timeout called by Bishop McGinnis. Because in 2A state football, Reedsville, reigning state finalist, the east side of the bracket, eastern side of the state with Davidson is sort of wide open. And there's a lot of programs that can make a push this year in 2A football. Well, there sure are. And you really have to look out for C.S. Davidson as one of those contenders, one of those teams that well, you talk about playoff football, and it's about playing hard-nosed defense and running the football. Forget it, man. Football is such a different game now that you can have a team like C.S. Davidson go into your own territory and come out with a win in October and November just because they're that good at what they do. It's not always about running the football anymore. This team can put it in the air, and they can get it done when they need to how they want to. Right now, Forest Hills, who just defeated Davidson by a touchdown, ranked third in the 2A bracket. East Duplin, the reigning champions, attempted one pass in the state title game. They beat Reedsville, upset the sure reigning did. state champs. And here's Bishop McGinnis with Reedsville colors, little 
High school football is a fickle thing. You can win in so many different ways, shapes, and forms. Now Waterfield off the timeout. Goes on the ground. Uh-oh. There's a lot of defenders there on the stop. Yes, Isaac Ross takes the worst of it. It's another run-stuffing play. Collapsing down like they have done this entire first quarter. Davidson has gotten into the backfield early and often and stopped many plays before they could get going. And the last one was no exception. And A.J. Houston looks like a tank on that D-line. Yeah. I don't know how they stop him. Eats up blocks, right? And allows a lot of these running back, or not, excuse me, running back. It's like back. you fighting for space with me in this press conference. Yeah, exactly right. Now, yeah. You are eating up space. <laughs> as we eat up the first 12 minutes of this first quarter. When we come back to Kernersville, Bishop McGinnis, they have some work to do in the second, as it's all C.S. Davidson tonight. League opener here in Kernersville. It's a one-sided game. Welcome back to Bishop McGinnis High School. Here's tonight's winning row. Everyone in that row will receive free tickets to the Carolina Classic Fair coming up in a couple of weeks, September 29th, October 8th. Carolina Classic Fair, there's magic in the fair. And the whiteout is spot on to it. Sure is. I mean, I like the togas. Get creative, right? Waterfield runs it on second and 12. And he's brought down. New quarterback, as a matter of fact. Miller Ajo comes in. Try something different. Give a, see where you can get a spark offensively. Miller Ajo, wide receiver, tight end, linebacker combo. So Ajo, sorry, Miller Ajo. Excuse, yes. Coach, so you got to make sure to say that right this week. Hey, man. Whatever you got to do to provide a spark for your team. Miller will keep it. And Angelo Lee is sprinting in like a bullet train with Nicholas Cage riding it. Good luck stopping this guy. I'm not sure how really to follow that up with anything sort of uh, good enough to top it. But hey, we'll just talk football here really quick. Angelo Lee has been everywhere in the backfield tonight. He is just another one of those bright spots on this defense for C.S. Davidson, getting in the backfield, finishing off plays. So here's the punting unit. Well, there has to be such a mental hurdle if you're Bishop McGinnis. You know the game's sort of out of hand and, and you're struggling to move the football. Oh, it's it's that, but you're also looking for good talking points, I think, coming into potentially next week. Of course, there's a lot of football left, but... Here's a fair catch. Up. And we'll start at the 46-yard line after Mullins makes the fair catch. 
This was the mental hurdle for C.S. Davidson as well, wanting to play a full 48-minute game. They may not have that in the second half, but how do they take these next 10 minutes and gear up for next week? But realistically, if you say you want to play full 48 minutes, fine, that's one thing. But the other part of that is understanding, like, look, if you can get your business handled in a way that you're not having your regulars in there for the entire game, you've done well there in that part too. Because Mount Island Charter, who's become a league rival and a nearby rival for Davidson, is up next week. It, it's an odd conference of 2A where teams are in Davidson, teams are in Charlotte, teams are in the Greensboro area. Ferguson, with all the time in the world, misses his target looking for Albert and amongst a sea of defenders for Bishop McGinnis. If there has been one bright spot, really, for Bishop McGinnis tonight. It's been some of that defensive line pressure, and I mean just the defensive line. They, Those three to four guys have been able to get into the backfield and make plays, get some pressure on Ferguson in this passing game. Noah Wilkinson there, one of the best defensive linemen coming in. Mario Lanza, who was a backup last year, he's a starter. Two starting D linemen graduated from last year's team. They went one and nine. Here's Ferguson on second down. A Little more time here, and Albert the catch. He is just short. That's a gain of nine. And a good stop there by Derek Murphy. You want to talk about progressing and how you continue to get better with a guy who hasn't played football before. With Ferguson, with Ferguson, it's about progressing through your levels of your throws. Short, intermediate to long. We've seen the long ball. He's got a big arm, and he can connect on those deep shots. But how do you thread the needle on those short to intermediate routes? Keep an eye on Mullins and Albert at the top of the screen on third down. Oh, just kidding. It's a run up the middle. And a first down run. For more on that receiving core, Hannah Brady, take it away. Guys, okay, senior receiver Tanner Mullins is back to 100% after sustaining a season-ending injury last year during a walkthrough before the first round of playoffs. Mullins developed compartment syndrome and could have almost lost his leg had it not been for an emergency surgery. Coach Albert recalled being in the hospital with his mom and they thought that they were amputating his leg. After some recovery, Mullins then went on to have one of his best baseball seasons that he's had in his three years of playing. Coach Albert told me that he still thinks he, that in the back of his head he's still trying to gain that confidence sometimes but other than that that explosiveness is back and better than ever guys and now Hetwer continues the party with a 30-yard pitch and catch gets down to the 18 gets that commitment from Maryland earlier this week and shows off some of the ability that he could put on display at the division one level that's a man amongst boys uh, sure digging is. for the secondary think about that size running that quickly down the field gets separation nice easy catch and then can run after Complete package in today's world of tight ends. The 35th reception for Hetwer, now a first down pass. Ferguson elects to run and is sacked. Holding on for dear life, Mario Lanza with the sack. Let's see if he's going to do that. I don't say it's a bad decision, but he had an entire backside of the field wide open. Two blockers right there on one guy just step around the backside and It's like his trampled. internal clock sped up. Yes. Start thinking, I don't have a guy there. Well, I have to take off and run. That's not always the case. Doesn't mean just getting yards, but extend the play. Allow your guys to go to work amongst that defensive backfield. This is Ferguson's fourth football game of his life. He's learning on the job. Called an open book test. So he finds Albert. That's a great solution. Albert gets a block from Mullins, and he's right near the sticks, about a yard short before Ross brought him down. Dare we say this could be another running situation. Two back-to-back -back runs? Who would have thought out of... C.S. Davidson. Nice end around again. Albert's really put together a nice quality game here after those first two drops early on in the game. And moving the field horizontally is something Bishop McGinnis has tried and could not, and Davidson's done all night. Well, the team speed, as we've already talked about, is impressive. They've got as good a team speed as anyone. Setting up third and short. Ferguson to throw. He's looking end zone, and Albert a bit behind him. That's a tough miss on third down, setting up fourth and short. Tough miss. Had Albert right there, just throws a little bit behind him and has it caused Brandon to come back towards the football. You put that in front of him, it's at least the first down, maybe six. And with Saunders tight in coverage, quarterback's going to elect to go for this on fourth down. You can't help but think fourth and one. Is this the time where maybe we see that unexpected run from this offense? Here's the eighth play for Davidson. Got the ball at the 40, now in the red zone. Here's the handoff. Little zig and zag for Albert. 
And he's just short, a yard short of the touchdown. Brandon Albert is a little heat-seeking missile. You can put him all over the field. He makes plays. Well, he's a multi, let's say Swiss Army knife, right? You can put him in the backfield, line him up there, line him up the slot outside the numbers. And he's just a guy that you really rely on to make plays, but he can do it from so many different parts of the field that you want to be able to utilize him in your offense. Give credit to the coach's son. He is earning some accolades tonight. Two yes. touchdowns. And now a first and goal. Davidson scored on five straight drives. Now first down lob. Look at this chance. Mullins climbs the ladder. Good luck stopping Tanner Mullins putting his size to work for the touchdown. Double coverage does not matter. When you got a guy the size of Tanner Mullins on the outside, you just throw it up to him and give him a chance to go get that football. He sure did that time. Didn't really have to climb the ladder. Just sticks those long arms out there. Big pause. Snares that football out of the air for six. It's got to help Connor Ferguson have all state players and Brandon Albert and Tanner Mullins, who both have touchdown catches. And now it's 36-0. We'll take the timeout. C.S. Davidson slinging the rock around tonight in Kernersville. Captioning for tonight's game is brought to you by Caring Hands at Caring Hands Home Health. We understand the happiness of your loved ones is important to their wellness. The Caring Hands of Tanner Mullins with a nice touchdown makes it 36 to nothing after the one yard score. That was the longest drive of the night with this Hayes Jewelers kickoff. I know it's tough managing that stuff. Anytime you need it, just let me know. There's a low, wobbling kick, returnable. Let's see if Miller can get outside, and he does not. That's a Hayes Jewelers kickoff. Hayes Jewelers of Lexington, the king of diamonds since 1939. And Mark, if you ever need a diamond, Hayes Jewelers could be the place to go. You don't say. Just in case. Yeah. I'll pass that on to somebody. I know some friends that might be willing to listen to you yeah. about that one. Hmm. Here we sit midway through the second quarter. Let's see if Alex Waterfield back in the game can resurrect a drive. Facing the blitz. There's a sack. Good luck stopping Jeff Kerber with the sack. That's his second of the year. Another example of a receiver. A receiver's not getting open down the field, really collapsed the pocket and pressure getting home yet again. Ooh. I guess I can't even say really receivers that time. If you're Waterfield, that is a quick collapsing pocket. It's a tough hit to take. Remember, Caleb Martin left tackle and Alexander Longcar, the captain at right tackle, is out tonight. Here's a screen and it's dropped. He was looking for Miller Aho, the running back and receiver. We have not called Patrick or Nick Graves' name tonight at receiver much tonight. They're, they're two good weapons, the twin brothers. Well, there hasn't really been much time for, for Waterfield to sit back there, survey the field, and get the football down the field to them. This defensive front has been very formidable for Davidson. Setting up third and 17. I have to get to the 30. Free man. Oh, nice catch on the screen and a fumble. No, incomplete. Ropko couldn't squeeze it, so the clock stops. 
I think Robko, really good job setting up the screen. Got those rushers upfield. Lee couldn't get there. Robko. Oh, was that a I'm football not sure move, Mark? That was, yeah. I mean, I don't know. That was the line good judge, pass. Steve Rakow, rooted incomplete. Debatable. Yeah, maybe okay, he yeah, you're right. have control of it. They juggle that like the Blue Man Group in the pyramid. Oh, wow. We have a whistle before the kick. Let's see, this is coming back. Unfortunately for Bishop McGinnis, only one drive with positive yardage tonight. You see another third and forever. We'll get moved back a couple more yards. And we saw the last punt that resulted in a safety. So it looks like the offense is now coming out. Oh, his oh, knee's down. down. So that's a safety, correct? Well, the, the ball was still technically out of the end zone. Oh, okay. Great explanation, Mark. Yeah, the ball has to be into the end zone for the safety. Completely. Man, okay. oh man. So here's Ferguson knocking on the door. Oliver Morris, the new running back in. Feed Big Ollie. Give it to him. There's the wrestler. And he body slams in for a touchdown. That is all Davidson tonight. Six drives, six touchdowns. As easy as they come right there, get the ball at the one yard line. Even the pass happy area offenses know what to do in that situation. That is run the rock. Give it to Oliver Morris. He's had a heck of a night defensively. Reward him with a tutty of his own. Chance to make it 43. That's pretty good. We'll take a time out here in Kernersville. Stick around, guys. We're going to keep you entertained for the next couple of hours. That's all Davidson tonight. Coming up at the My 48 Halftime Report, I love the little tease music come back from break, guys. Are you not feeling what I'm feeling here? We'll have this week's Scholar Athletes presented by Bojangles, interviews with the principals, highlights, and more. And some smooth music. That's to nice. Groove us back in from this commercial. We must have just gotten that this week. Talk to the audio person. Fantastic work here. Huh? Brian, the audio guy. Be sure to approach him at halftime. Returnable kick here for Miller. And a tackle there by the touchdown maker a moment ago. Drew, our director, is very smart because he's giving me constant updates throughout the game, like our producer, Lori Bates. Two of them make us sound really smart. With Mark Covert, Hannah Brady on the sideline, and Evan Budrovich. It is all C.S. Davidson tonight here at Bishop McGinnis. A program that went 1-9 last year has showed strides with a win already this year. And just a little outmatched tonight. Yeah, a little bit, but this is this is what you see when you want to beat the best. You have to go against them, and you find out exactly what it's going to take to get to the top. Here's a deep shot, and it's oh no! It surprised the receiver, Martin. He thought the tight end was going to catch it, and Cal Barrett, who's like six five, and then the ball snuck over his head and went to the receiver. What is it with these tall tight ends these last two weeks? Reedsville's got a six seven guy at tight end. Now we got six five. And I don't know, there was some miscommunication. Both guys really close. And then Micah the McCoy almost picked it. And then Martin goes, wait a second, it hit me in the head. Uh, just miscommunication. Again, they're both in the same area of the field. Got to talk a little bit, figure out who's going for that football. 
Now second and ten. Here's the blitz. Waterfield escapes it. Look at Waterfield moving. Uh, uh, does get past the line of scrimmage, so it's not grounding. What a tough night for Waterfield, getting pressure from everywhere. And what do you? What else do you do? I mean, you have, you're you're fighting for your life pretty much every play because the pressure is getting back there. You don't have a chance again to just drop back, survey the field, and find your receivers right now because all that pressure is getting home. You have to move and create something out of nothing. Alex Waterfield facing a third and ten, looking for the second first down of the night for Bishop McGinnis. Four-man rush. Battle is bobbled. Oop, couldn't hang on. Chance there to move the chains, but Cal Barrett couldn't squeeze it. And he looks at the gloves. That's what could have been. Good pass that time. Waterfield delivered right where it needs to be. And I like the size and the route running there, Barrett. I mean, that's a good play. Yeah, it is. You just got to finish it. That's that's where the next step is. I talked to Mark Holcomb. He says, you got to just figure out how to win football games. And that's the next step of the process. It's going to be small details like that. Mark Holcomb, who resurrected Oak Grove High School, he led North Davidson for a decade, just retired from the teaching side of things. Is now a full-time administrator here at Bishop McGinnis. He was retired for what? He said six weeks, five weeks? Probably being generous. And then went right back to work here in February at Bishop McGinnis. He went up and down the halls to find players in other sports to convince them to play football. That's a good idea. Of course, the movement here the last couple of years has been, hey, get your kids to play multiple sports, not just the same sport all the time. Work different muscle groups, ligaments, things of that nature. It's going to provide for a healthier lifestyle athletically. At a Bishop McGinnis High School that's won nine women's basketball titles from 06 to 14 and won a men's basketball state title just three years ago. Talent's there. Just got to go find it. There's Davidson. He's got plenty of talent tonight. End around to Albert. He breaks off one tackle. He just scoots and moves and boot scoot and boogie and gets eight. You can't stop this guy tonight. They're just deploying him in ways that are taking advantage of his skill set and what the defense is showing as a whole. Those jet sweeps have been deadly. Just getting him out in space. It's one of the key points that. And TJ now TJ calls the play to his son. Runs it back in. Runs it back in. I love that stuff. Yeah. But it's one of those things that TJ actually told us this week, right? I mean, he wants to get his playmakers in space with the football in their hands. And TJ's third son, Zach, who's not in high school, he's one of the ball boys for the team. So the whole Halpert family here tonight. Back on the ground. Look at this hole. Albert, he's moving forward. And Albert from 43 runs it in. I guess the coach's play call worked. He found his son for the touchdown. Man, oh man. Albert just did a really nice job at getting down the field, but also following his blocker. One of his linemen was a convoy, essentially a one-man convoy down the field, followed right behind him, kept his hand on his back. And once he decided one way to take a defender, Albert cuts back the other way around him. And from there, it was a foot race into the end zone. Good extra point. We've seen Grayson Champion make five straight extra points after missing one. Let's watch here. Right down the field. Not one of his linemen. No, that's one of his. And Albert shoved his fullback, Mahalan. Yes. Clear some space. Again, you're falling down the field. That's the one guy. You're in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Go ahead, make a block. <laughs> and cut up to That's good instinct. Running the football, having a natural feel for what you're supposed to do, and getting your guys into position so everyone can succeed. That's 51 casual yards for Albert just on that drive. Sure is. After he picked up last year, 220 yards against Bishop McGinnis. That's a man who's not thought of too kindly here in Kernersville. Uh, no. <laughs> Probably not. He had eight catches for 98 yards and a touchdown last week. Think about what he's done in this game. And certainly you can see why he's gathering that attention right now. He is a playmaker in almost every sense of the word. Multiple Division I offers at the FBS level. His dad, TJ, who resurrected this Davidson program, he built it, essentially, in 2012, started the program. And here they are now, an elite 2A football team. Just a football guy. Who's also a baseball coach. Just a sports guy. And he's a big Hallmark Christmas movie guy. Oh. I know Hannah's going to touch on that later. Sure is. Here's the Hayes Jewelers kickoff. 
Good return here for Miller. And Aho gets out to the 25 yard line. But you can, you can tell that this is a football team that is really fundamentally sound with C.S. Davidson, can't you? I mean, of course you see the score and you, you've seen everything that's gone on tonight. But just looking again at the little things where you're noticing the difference between Bishop McGinnis currently and C.S. Davidson, it's those little things, right? The little plays here and there, just making a catch for five yards, doing whatever you can, just catching the football, making a block here or there, making a play. Let's that's see if Waterfield could get some time as that run gets a couple of yards and then he's held up. Because you do want to see McGinnis get some first downs, move the chain, show some life in this first half. Yeah, you do, and that's what you really want to see. Again, from here on out, it's realistically about finding good talking points going into next week. Like, hey, what are some good things we can really build on and move forward? Of course, you're going to talk about the things that went wrong and how to fix those. But you got to find positives here and build on those. Here's a second and seven. Another good run for Aho. This is a running game who lost its starting quarterback, Jamison Graves, who was a dual threat, 1,000 yards passing, 800 yards rushing. And now it's a, it's a running back by committee here at Bishop McGinnis. And that's, that's a really hard thing to replace. Of course, within the game of football now, we talked about a little bit of how every team does something different now, especially at the high school level. But when you've got a playmaker who can throw the football and is also very good with his feet and running the football as well, that's a playmaker in today's game that's hard to replace and that's exactly what Bishop McGinnis is finding out. Life after that is harder because you're having multiple guys accounting for that instead of just one guy. Here's a third down pass. Oh, here's a nice deep shot. And deflected. Great coverage. That was Lane McClure in coverage looking for Aiden Martin. No, pardon me, Anderson. Nope, sorry. Stephen Jacoby Morgan. Good coverage down the field, a little physical. <laughs> I think Morgan may have gone away with one there. A little bit of pushing and shoving. I think both guys were shoving each other a little yeah. bit. So the punting unit comes on. Busiest man on the field is Sale Guzman. Tanner Mullins ready, and the snap is bobbled. Rugby style blocked. Look at the big man scoop on it. Oliver Morris, who's done everything, score a touchdown, get a pick, and block a punt. One of the trifectas, right? Get back there, play on all sides of the football, contributing in big ways. Man, like, where do you start for, for the guys on this roster? Boink. Uh, Bloop. Scoop. They say when it's not your night, it's not your night. Yeah, it might not be for Bishop McGinnis. It has been for Davidson, though. We have a new quarterback in for Davidson. That's Lane McClure running. Gets a block. McClure splits the difference and almost scores. I don't know how he pulled that off to the five. Well, hey, you got a wide receiver now at your quarterback position. You know he's got the speed to the outside. Gets in there, makes a play right away with his legs and almost goes to pay dirt with it. And Lane McClure has scored three touchdowns this year, but this would have been his best. And you see the, the speed right there, and you're right, Evan. Almost splits in between the two defenders of Bishop McGinnis. He gets in, but he's inside the five. Yet again, this offense is threatening. <laughs> Look at the center, Josh Renshaw. <laughs> kind of high step his way over to the line of scrimmage. A.J. Houston joining them. Here we go, first and goal. Six straight scoring drives. McClure wants it. He breaks it, and a flag might push this back. That's J.R. Saunders on the stop. I think the first time we've seen a flag outside of the first play of the game. There's Bill Kroom explaining. Hey, Bishop McGinnis fighting here a little bit, right? Getting down the field, making plays. Now that is a shoestring tack. Sure is. J.R. Saunders took a licking on a kick return, or, or lack thereof, just catching the ball on a pooch kick on a kick return. 
then he called for a fair catch and got laid out. But so comes he's, back in, he's returning nice the favor. Yeah, exactly. He goes around, comes back around, my friend. Karma, karma, karma. This is a first and goal, remember, so they have to get to the end zone. That hasn't been a problem for Davidson tonight. Averaging 30 points a game coming in. They'll double that at least. Albert splits the difference, breaks one. Look at Albert staying up. Zig, juke, dive. Touchdown. Brandon Albert, you are insane. How did he stay up? I don't know. Where did he go? Uh, there was a, just a mess of white and blue in the middle of the field. And then out pops number five, and he's still making a run for it. It was like a calzone, and the pepperoni just exploded from the middle. It was delicious. That's a way to put it. I'm a big pizza guy, personally. <laughs> I still don't know how he scored. Oh, my gosh. He's a magician. It's now 57 to nothing. I mean, how do you how do you stop that? You got him dead to rights. You've done your job, just clogging up the middle of the field, and he just pops out. Look, defenders all around him. He's just squeezing whoop, through. Whoop, whoop. Oh. Nope, nope. And then he takes Mario Lanz in for the touchdown. Like, look at this. Chris Berman will be proud. Not one, two, three, four, five, six. six. There's the seventh, and there's the touchdown for young Albert. Man, oh man. Stay tuned for the My48 Halftime Report. We'll have this week's Bojangles Scholar Athletes. Interviews with the principals, highlights, and more here at Bishop McGinnis. There's your Carolina Cowboys fan cam. It's whiteout night here at Bishop McGinnis. Look at that. And join the fan cam. Carolina's professional bull riding team next week, September 22nd to the 24th at the Greensboro Coliseum. Carolina Cowboys, the cowboy way. And that's how you have fun in high school right there. Live it up. Two plays, 17 yards, and the crazy Albert touchdown. Hey, Albert. Bishop McGinnis is number five, tries the same. But Aho a little tougher to squeak through. He gets out past the 30. Man, oh man. I'm still blown away by that Albert touchdown. I mean, what do you what do you say? Realistically, what do you say? That is four touchdowns for him tonight. Eight touchdowns in two years against Bishop McGinnis. certainly tell you there may not be a team that's going to be happier to see him go than these villains. Albert is a senior. Great point. Waterfield, the quarterback keeper, and gets a yard before Houston jumps on him. Hey, hey, blue, kind of hear some of the calls even coming in from the sideline as well. It's got to be tough, you know? No, it is. The score and the circumstance of this game. But that's what you got to have these kids understand. Like, hey, we're just because the score is what it is, we, we do not stop playing football. We, we have to keep going and keep building. Here's the blitz. I don't know if anyone blocked, which will make life tough for Waterfield. Yeah, Waterfield's trying his best, but this is a, a hard mismatch tonight. Oh, it's becoming to a point where you're looking at a team that is trying to do its best, but Davidson is just overloading the box, bringing all these guys more than can be blocked. And at that point, it's a numbers game. And this offense has been at a disadvantage all night, just continues to be more of the same. Bishop McGinnis, negative 42 yards right now. They'd love to break a play open here. Third down. And an uh, encroachment on the defense. There's five good yards. If your D coordinator, Rob Morris, longtime assistant here, eight years at Davidson, you have to love the, the effort of your defense tonight. They played lights out. I mean, they have been getting into the backfield, making explosive plays, bringing ball carriers to the ground, sacks, interceptions, fumbles. I mean, you name it, statistically, this defense right now has done everything you can defensively in just the first half. 
Here we go, third and nine. First chance to move the chains in the quarter for McGinnis. Quarterback keeper. Oh, he gets a block. And he's four yards short. I think this is fourth down territory here for Bishop McGinnis. I think at this point, everything is fourth down territory for Bishop McGinnis. <laughs> Alex Waterfield, who has those long baby arms in the eyes of his head coach. He is throwing up quick, though, tonight. It's a growing experience, a teaching experience, a learning experience for everyone on board. That includes Coach Holcomb. It's about figuring out what your roster is, what these guys can do, and you take that into the locker room for halftime. And this should be the final play of the half. Waterfield gets it off in time. Look at that. Move the chains. He does. One of the best plays for Bishop McGinnis in the final seconds of a dominant first half for Davidson. Dominant is the name of the game right now for C.S. Davidson. Just coming into this game, we knew that this was going to be a tall task for Bishop McGinnis, but the dominance was on full display for the Spartans in the first half. Passing, throwing, defensively, you name it, they did it. I wonder how T.J. feels about his son Brandon at halftime. Four touchdowns later. He's played a, a complete game. Again, got a little rattled initially, knew he dropped two easy balls on the first drive of the game. Results in a punt for Davidson, but from there, he has been lights out and a true star on the field. But I don't I don't think uh, TJ's gonna let him know that just yet. Let's go down to Hannah Brady. Coach up 56 to zero. What'd you like about that first half? Um, I mean, we, we ran the ball well. Kids played hard. Um, I think, uh, I mean, we score, I don't know how many touchdowns in the first half. You know, we played well. Anything you're looking to clean up come second half? Um, yeah, we missed an extra point and had a couple penalties there that we need to do a little bit better with. So. Thanks, Coach. Good luck in second half. Appreciate it. Stay with us. We have more coming up for you on the My48 Halftime Report. Stay with us, guys. through Throughout the 2023 Carolina Classic Fair Friday Night Rival season, Bojangles will recognize an exceptional senior student athlete from a participating school with a plaque presentation prior to each game. This week's Bojangles Scholar Athlete from Bishop McGinnis High School, Nina Holton. Bishop McGinnis's Nina Holton is a co-captain of the tennis team and runs indoor and outdoor track. She is an all-state, all-conference, and the double-state champion runner-up in tennis. Nina is president of the National Honor Society, was a junior marshal, and a member of the Mathematical Perfect. Philosophical <laughs> Society. She volunteers her time at St. Leo's Catholic Church as a member of the St. Dorothy's Guild to help keep up with the parish's floral needs. 
In Nina's spare time, she enjoys backpacking, reading, watercoloring, and spending time with her friends. Nina is also eligible to win a $5,000 scholarship to be presented at the end of the season courtesy of Bojangles. Bojangles proudly gives back to our community and is honored to be the sponsor of the Friday Night Rivals Scholar Athlete Award. Welcome back to the My 48 Halftime Report. Early before the game, we had a chance to catch up with the head of school for Bishop McGinnis Catholic High School, Dr. Jared Rashford. Take a look at what he had to say. You're watching the My 48 Halftime Report. I'm Hannah Brady, now joined alongside Dr. Jared Rashford of the Bishop McGinnis Catholic High School. Dr. Rashford, I've already seen it in your faculty, your staff, and your students, but talk to us a little bit about the Bishop McGinnis Catholic High School community. Absolutely. Well, it's great to have you here, Hannah. We're really excited about tonight's game. Um, Bishop McGinnis, for folks who might not be familiar, um, is 62 years young. The school was opened in 1959 over in Winston-Salem, actually Link Road, which is the current location of Our Lady of Mercy Catholic School. Um, the school relocated in 2001 to the Kernersville location so that we could draw from a wider geographical range for all of our students this year. We, are, we have grown to 457 students. Um, our radius is about 45 miles. We have 50 full-time faculty and staff. We have well over 3,000 alumni after 62 years and uh, are excited to continue to grow. Now, these athletes are not only athletes, but they're students as well. Talk to our viewers about what really makes the Bishop McGinnis diversity um, special and just relates to those student athletes. Absolutely. So kind of at the core of our educational philosophy here at Bishop McGinnis is educating the whole student. So we um, aim to uh, provide a formation in the academics, but also in character and in faith. So we are a Catholic Christian school in the area, and really that component of character. There are so many virtues and skills that our student athletes can acquire by playing sports. Each season, we have close to 70% of our student body participates in a sport at Bishop McGinnis, which we're really excited about, and that program continues to grow. So our athletics really is a major component of uh, educating and forming the whole student. Now every school has them. What are some traditions and programs that make Binish, Bishop McGinnis that experience? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think beginning in freshman year, we have a phenomenal program. This year we have 126 freshmen from 34 different middle schools. And one of the ways that we help integrate them into the Bishop community is we have a program known as BIGS. And each of the freshmen is assigned an upper class who serves as a mentor. They meet them on a special orientation day. They get together, they walk the classes so they can meet their teachers. And the BIGS meet with them throughout first semester to check in on them. As you kind of move through the program, um, junior year, we have a tradition of a ring ceremony. So each of our juniors receives a class ring with Bishop McGinnis. Um, obviously on the ring, the uh, ring is presented from a faculty member who attended Bishop or from a parent or a family member who went to Bishop. So that really shows the strength of our community. And I think senior year, probably one of the um, most famous traditions is our winter room program. And that's when our students take a week off of school and they actually go job shadow two different careers that they've researched and they're interested in pursuing. We get phenomenal feedback from our students as to how that prepares them for college and life beyond. Well, we appreciate you so much for being on the My48 Halftime Report. Don't go anywhere. We have a lot more in store for you coming up next.
Welcome back to the My48 Halftime Report. Let's take a look at some Friday Night Rivals highlights from across the country. The best Thursday Night Lights and Friday Night Rivals highlights from across the country. He's very sad he has to miss this game, but his brother just made a big play. And they're arguably Station Camp's two best players. Here comes the best player on the field for Springfield. C.J. Cobbins is everywhere. 97 yards to the house. Fourth down and one. The game on the line. They hand it to McCollum, and he gets up to the outside. He's to the 10, steps inside to the 5, and the big man, Angelo McCollum. Wants to air it up. Looking for Donnelly up the near side. He's got him inside the 20. First down, Trojans. Uh, running the ball today. And on first down, they're going deep, and he's got Caden Lloyd. And the first play of the game goes for a touchdown. Shotgun snap. Deep far side. That's caught. Bruce Lass going over the middle. Picked off! A game-saving interception. Intercepted. Ball game. The freshman Colton Overby to win it. Intercepted by Alan Dickerson. Springfield wins. Welcome back to the My48 Halftime Report. I'm now joined with DJ Hargrave, the event and branding manager for the Carolina Classic Fair. DJ, tell us about this contest that we are watching right now. So we're watching this pre the pretzel stacking contest uh, presented by the Carolina Classic Fair. It's our way to bring a little bit of the fair excitement to high school football. Everyone loves pretzels, everyone loves fair food. So uh, we're combining that with a game that can be fun for these kids here out here at Bishop McGinnis, and they're gonna win a fun prize for whoever wins. And now, what is the Carolina Classic Fair, and what can we expect? So the Carolina Classic Fair is September 29th through October 8th. Uh, you can expect a lot of great things. Um, you know, one of the things that we just announced is the concert series with Chase Matthew, um, Dylan Marlowe, and Landon Parker. Uh, we have a lot of the great grandstand entertainment coming this year. Now, DJ, why is it so important for the fairgrounds and the Carolina Classic Fair to support high school football? Yeah, so it's important for us because that's a huge part of our fairgoer uh, audience is, you know, students and, and teachers and, and parents and families. Um, so it's important for us to support high school football. And uh, one of the things that we're doing to do that this year and to emphasize that is we're bringing school day where all uh, West Sanford South County students and teachers get free admission. Um, and then you can also donate three school supplies on school day and get free admission to the fair. So we're doing a few cool things for our uh, school system audience this year. 
Well, that sounds awesome. I'll have to join you at the fair this year. Always great to be with you, DJ. Thank you. Guys, back to you. Hannah, thank you so much. Pretzel stacking is one of my favorites because you never know who's going to win, and sometimes it tastes delicious. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> End of the year isn't as great as the beginning. So the numbers don't lie, and this game's a little one-sided. God, look at all the food on the floor. Don't eat it, Mark. I won't. So negative yardage is, is a little misleading because quarterback sacks affect the rushing yards. But sure. let's focus on, on C.S. Davidson. 15 carries for those 146 yards. Very efficient on the ground. Yeah, and, and <laughs> it's an air raid offense, and you would never know looking at these stats. Really balanced attack, but they understand that in a game like this where it got out of hand pretty quickly, you got to be able to focus in and work on your your procedures, different aspects of your game. And this is an offense that if it needs to run, it needs to know that it has that ability to do it consistently. They've done a really good job of that here tonight with the play calling, mixing up different runs, and throwing in there with some deep shots down the field. And then Brandon Albert, the son of the head coach, TJ, four touchdowns. That's the other hidden nugget in this game. And rushing and passing. I mean, he has been a dynamo offensively. They've deployed him in several different ways, whether it's been out of the backfield and the slot, outside the numbers. I mean, you name it. And he is lined up there tonight for this offense. And he's just been one of the many bright spots for the Spartans. Roll the tape. There's a lot of Davidson tape to observe in this first half. There's Mahalan getting rolling early. This easy run to the outside had a good feeling, and it was the start of really an avalanche for Davidson offensively, and then a pick six by the other star receiver on offense, this time on defense, Milt. Back to Albert, who did a couple of these tonight. Not one, not two, not three, but four. And it was just, a, again, not to, to pile on, but just really an offensive showcase of what this offense can do, what this defense can do, what this team in C.S. Davidson can do. From from Millens to Albert to Ferguson to Mahalan to Morris. I mean, you could go down the list. It was a who's who in the first half, really capped off by one of the better plays we've seen in person this year by Brandon Albert. I mean, just an all-around performance in the first half that I think if you're looking from the outside into this stadium, from those other contenders that are going to face C.S. Davidson this season and potentially in the playoffs, it's a game that you knew they were going to have, they were going to come in and have a chance to dominate, but it has to open your eyes to some of the balance they've had tonight. You know, sometimes a good team just takes care of business, and the good news is we got a fun one next week. Now, this is when league play really gets cooking, right? And the Reagan Raiders, who we saw earlier this year, they'll take on the Glenn Bobcats. That game has some league implications. Two clubs that have had slow starts but have played difficult schedules. Well, they, they sure have. We saw Reagan a couple of weeks ago. It would be fun to see how they progressed since we saw them against the Grimsley Whirlies. And uh, Glenn, always such a tough out. Defensively, they're always super stout uh, on the other side of Kernersville from us here. So it would be a fun matchup, pretty defensive heavy, but... Uh, maybe a slugfest over there in Pofftown. That's next thir thir Friday, sorry, next Friday, the 22nd at 7.30 p.m. Here comes C.S. Davidson. This is game one of the league conference. This is a 1A, 2A conference, depending on your size. You get moved up, moved down, but C.S. Davidson in 2A football, one of the best teams in their division. And Mark will compete with the likes of Clinton and Salisbury and Forest Hills for a 2A championship. Well, and they love another crack at Forest Hills, I'm sure. They really did a nice job settling down in the first half. Didn't really get going until a little bit later in the first quarter almost. Took a drive to get some of that stuff out of their system, but now they're able to get rolling into halftime and see what they have planned here for the second half. We're still waiting for Coach Holcomb to talk to Hannah, but... It has been all C.S. Davidson. They have not had to use the starters in the second half and all three wins. That'll probably be the same here in this, this second half. What do you want to see out of Bishop McGinnis in this next just, 24 minutes? Just positives. Where, where are you building? Find a way to get into this ball game in a way that you're proud. You can say, hey, you, you finished the ball game well. We ran the ball well, we threw the ball well, we passed protected well, we ran the ball, whatever it may be. Play great defense in the second half, whatever it is. Find a way to generate some excitement for your kids because right now they know what it is. Everyone here in the stadium knows what it is. This game is effectively over. 
for lack of a better term, but it's an opportunity for both sides to really build on, on different fundamentals going forward. Let's go down to Hannah Brady. Coach, obviously not the first half that you were looking for. What was your message in the locker room? Well, the message has been the same thing throughout from the beginning of the game to the halftime. We just got to, we got to play hard. We got to play for each other. We got to, uh, you know, we got to figure out what makes us tick as a team and, and figure those things out. So I, I don't think we're playing as hard as we can. They're a very good football team. I'm not taking anything away from them at all, but we have more in our tank and we got to figure out how to get it out of us. You know, I told him, I said, this is it's a microcosm of life, right? Some of you might get, you lose a job one day and you got to fight. You got to fight to figure out what's yours and you got to earn what's yours. Thanks coach, good luck in the second half. Thank you, appreciate y'all. Stay with us as we make our way to the second half of this football game here in Kernersville. Stay with us on My48. Welcome back to Kernersville. This is a running clock in the second half, unless Bishop McGinnis gets on a scoring run here with a couple of touchdowns. Only thing that'll stop the clock is a scoring play or a timeout. Runs out of bounds, do not apply. Alex Waterfield working on second and 12 after negative rushing yards in the first half. Wow, uh, Ropko got slammed to the ground. A suplex action for you. That was Noah Watson who brought him down. Uh, this d defense for C.S. Davidson, I don't know if it's WWE training, wrestling, practice, but these guys know how to tackle. Seen it all night long. First half, they were all over the field making sure handed tackles. Not a whole lot of plays where broken tackles were had by Bishop McGinnis offensively. So credit this defense for really getting to the ball. And then once they got there, making the play. Two tailbacks now for Waterfield on third and eight. This is the toss. Ropko breaks a tackle. Look at Ropko go. Just a yard short. Come on, coach. No huddle. Let's go for this fourth down. Come on. Right? That's got to be the philosophy offensively. Uh, you would think. I mean, they're certainly going to go for it, but I don't I don't really think up tempo is what this team does. But I, I can see where you wouldn't have that sense of urgency. Good hole opened up. Good recognition by, by Ropko to find it. Get up field and get close to a first down. Before Mahalan got the stop. Here's a fourth and one. First drive of the second half for Bishop McGinnis, who converted a, a fourth down right at halftime. Yep. Now at a halftime, here's a fourth and one. Blitz coming. Uh oh, confusion. Waterfield. He moves. Wait, where did he slide? Uh oh. They give him the first down. Alex Waterfield gets the yard he needs, and maybe not an inch more. No close play, and <laughs> that was that was iffy right there. Waterfield just get up field. He's a slide, but just dive for it. Yeah, the head first is gonna work. Yeah, he went feet first. That's the crescent forward first down. I, I understand protecting your body, but 
Crescent Ford of High Point serving the triads since 1970. Late handoff, Ropko gets a block. Look at Ropko banging bodies into C.S. Davidson territory. That's a nice run for 11. Really nice job following his blockers and opening a hole. Really now we're seeing some of that that playing time now where these, these bishops, excuse me, the Bishop McKinnis villains are opening up holes on the right side of that offensive it's line. It's not knights, it's not pawns, it's not queens, it's villains. villains. Not chess pieces, but villains. We're not used to talking about the villains as much, so you know, it's a little bit different. There's a toss to Rop go off the first down. Breaks the tackle. Not gonna break two, that's Zach Albert in on the stop. Albert is the youngest brother. There's three brothers, Lucas, who's the ball boy, Brandon, the four touchdowns, and Zach on the stop. So right in the middle between those other two brothers. Zach's made a couple of nice plays tonight, and what we've seen already, you can't go horizontal against this defense of Davidson. They are gonna get to the ball carrier, they're gonna bring them down, and they have great team speed to make all of that happen. This is second and long for a passing offense that really struggled in the first half. Zero total yards passing. Back to the run game. Ropko gets that yardage back, setting up third and 12. And Bishop McGinnis is now into Davidson territory for the second time all night. Talked about building on what you can, finding positives here in the second half. Nice job in this drive, coming out with authority, setting up a running game to give yourself some presence. But now third and long upcoming, you've got to almost certainly put this football in the air. Waterfield, the handoff. And that's going to go nowhere. Ross is spun down. Because it's bull in the china shop. This defense knows the run's coming, and they're pinning the ears back. Well, they sure do. And that time, I don't know if it mattered whether the rush, the run was coming or if it was a pass, because they look to get into the backfield and apply that pressure. Just too many bodies. And then Gordon Ramsey Anderson came in on the stop. His middle name's not Ramsey, but anytime you get a chance to throw in some <laughs> Chef Ramsey references, you got to go for it. They do call him a firecracker on defense, we and just, I mean that serious. Uh, we just can't quote Gordon Ramsey. Not here. Not on my 48. No, no, no. Great call, Mark. Well, Hannah Brady on the sidelines. Mark Covert. I'm Evan Budrovich. So this is a fourth and 12 for McGinnis. Pressure on Waterfield. Takes his shot. And that's incomplete. A turnover on downs. The clock will continue to run here. It's a little too far out of the reach down the field. Waterfield. But I like that there. throw from Waterfield. Yeah, no, it's a good look, and he had time to make the throw. More importantly, the protection held up, got it down the field, just could not connect too far out of reach. So a nice drive, but on the other side for the reserves of C.S. Davidson. Waterfield is break. 0 of 12 tonight. Yep. He's looking for that first completion. We'll see if he can find it. We told you both teams will go deep into the bench. This is Simon Martinez, the new quarterback. Simon hands it off. And Josh Andrews, the sophomore tailback, gets a couple. Stop there by Mario Lanza. He went to the sideline to get his play from, from TJ Albert. Comes back in. There's a lot of new faces. This is something TJ Albert mentioned in three wins. The backups have played the entire second half. Yeah. And now these kids are going to be future starters next year. So they got to be ready, right? Here's Simon Martinez, who does not have a number on his helmet. Gives you a sense he's on the JV team. But there's a nice run. That'll be at the sticks. And Andrews is considered short. Third and half a yard coming up. Nice run straight up the middle. Good push up front by his offensive line. Opening up a hole for him to go through. Finds it quickly and... I, I like this Andrews kid. He runs hard. He puts yeah. his head down. He goes for it. Well, and that's what you need. You talk about the guys that are going to be future starters for this offense and have a legacy to uphold. Nonetheless, they have to be able to play. That's a third and short. Look at Anderson. He's got it inside the 35. Andrews gets the run. Josh Andrews, who's played middle linebacker. He plays lacrosse. And this year, getting some tailback time. It's these guys that really help build a team. As he's switching the ball between hands on the carry. Yeah, but that's good awareness, right? Get it away from the defenders, go left to right, get it towards the sideline that time. Good awareness by Anderson in the open field. After the Crescent Ford first down, clock is running this entire third quarter. McClure pitches it out. 
Ooh, Anderson hit hard, but he takes the defender with him to the 20. To the 30, in fact, so Andrews gets five. But these are the guys that really make a roster great from top to bottom. It can't just be your starters and how well they play. It's when the backups come in. Whether it's from injury, whether it's from cleanup time, whatever it may be, how do they perform? What do they do? And remember, stud receiver Tanner Mullins injured in the playoffs. Yeah. And he was a thousand yard receiver. People yep. had to fill his void last it's year. Next man up mentality. But if you don't get any burn, if you don't have any sort of playing experience, how are you expected to come up and contribute without that? Tonight, Alberts filled the void with four touchdowns. Here's a fumble. Nice recovery by Andrews, and the blitz gets in there. I'm going to try a flea flicker for a second. They thought about it, <laughs> and then it was hang on for dear life as it sets up third and forever. But really, to, to complete that thought, these are the guys that not just on, on, on game night, but also throughout the week in practice. Like, how is your team built from top to bottom? Are you getting good competition and good reps during practice during the week? And these are the guys that help you do that. Look at this man, Simon Martinez. He's swimming in those shoulder pads, but he's stepping up for his team tonight. A young sophomore, not old enough to drive, but he is able to carry the load on his handoff. And that's going to be short of the first down by a bunch. Coming up tonight, we got a ton to talk about on this fourth down. Our player of the game, Carolina Classic Fair player of the game. There's magic in the fair. Also tonight in the fourth quarter, we'll have our West Shore home play of the game. West Shore home bringing happiness to every home. You know what also brings happiness to homes, Mark? Hayes Jewelers. Hayes Jewelers kickoff. If you're ever in the mood for a ring, just call our friends at Hayes Jewelers. I am sure to pass that message along to somebody. I heard you might be in the mood for a ring. Let's we'll see what happens in this fourth quarter. Conference ring, what? Martinez with the best team in this division. Davidson running outside. Oh, nice tackle in open space. Isaac Ross gets the stop on fourth down. You know what? We'll take our final timeout of this quarter and then come back for the fourth after this. Take a quick break. C.S. Davidson rolling tonight in Kernersville. Closed captioning for tonight's game is brought to you by Caring Hands at Caring Hands Home Health. Hands-on, compassionate care around the clock. It's all C.S. Davidson tonight over Bishop McGinnis. Which reminds us, stay tuned in the fourth quarter. We'll have our Linder Turf and Tractor scoring summary. Get a great deal on your next Kubota at Linder Turf and Tractor. They have a new one coming up in Greensboro on McConnell Center Drive Ooh. off I-40. That's on my ride home tonight. New locale. I don't know if I'm going to mow the lawn tonight. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> Here's a bounce-off run. Ropko, he's got the first and lowers the shoulder. Now, this running game was not a presence in the first half. Good to see here in the third quarter. Yeah, it is. And I got to tell you, this Heath Ropko, I like him a lot. Didn't play last week. Really is a, a ball for carrier the, that the shows good vision. I mean, we've seen that here in the second half. When he finds a hole, he's going to hit that hole with authority. Does a good job reading blockers and gets to the open field well. Sets up a first down. Ropko back to it. Slips through the defense. And then the Anthony Cardamoni brings him down. He'll play on that Oki front as they switch 4-3, 3-4. Three, 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 Cardamoni with a stop. Rocco just a junior as well. So one of those guys that's returning. Second, second. Has another year in this system to grow. And he was out last week with an injury. Yep. Big reason why Bishop McGinnis lost a tight one, 15-14. to 14. Rocco back to it. Breaks one, breaks two, make it three. 
And a first Rocco down for Rocco. It's like watching a wrecking ball up the middle. What a strong runner. Well, and, and really, you got to think about what a difference he would have made last week in that loss. But now here tonight, again, try to build off of things that you can, can work off of the rest of the season. The running game has shown some life here in the second half behind the pads of number 24, Heath Rocco. This will be the final play of the third quarter. Okay, Mill Waterfield, make sure to snap this tick, 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 tick. Yeah. And the ticking time bomb heads to the fourth. Pretty content with letting it go. Okay. When we come back, final 12 minutes here in Kernersville. The villains look to sneak into Davidson territory and get a touchdown to close out the night. Our game of the week brings us to Kernersville, North Carolina. And if you're still with us, you love high school football. Davidson and Bishop McGinnis battling it out here in the fourth. Ropko back on the ground. He's had a busy second half. Just 11 total yards for McGinnis tonight. But Ropko's done a good job in the second half. That means they've had like 40 some odd yards here in the second half, right? Negative 32 coming out of halftime. So, hey. Bright spots again, and he has been one of them. Heath Robko in the second half has been fantastic toting the football. Enter this game with 150 yards rushing, and we're seeing why tonight. Coach Mark Holcomb said he's a he's a film watcher, man. This guy's always yeah. in the film room watching tape. He watches his O-line, give him a block to the left, and there's a tackle for loss. Noah gotta, Watson on the stop. You gotta remember too, like those coming into this game, those 150 yards rolling on 23 tackles. So you're talking about a guy who's averaging over five yards a carry already, and that's exactly where you want to be at. You want to be a really good ball carrier as a running back. You've got to at least hit that five yards per carry mark, and Robco hits that and more. 
This is a third and 13. Rob go back to it. He picked up a first down on the last series. And he'll get about three. What's impressed you about Davidson's defense to me? The speed. Uh, really Number the team speed, but how they hustle to the football and then bring carriers down. You see right here, even the pursuit, everything about them defensively, what you preach as a defensive coach, getting to the football, bringing the ball carry down, hustling to the football. I mean, it, is, it has all been there, and it's been textbook really by this defense of Davidson, just getting getting there, making the play. That was the sophomore, Grant Fishthal. Try saying that five times fast. And doing it again. On the stop. That was on the edge here, fourth and ten. Here comes the blitz. Uh-oh. Waterfield's not going to get it. Waterfield. Younger Zach Waterfield. Albert Waterfield. joining his brother there with the stop. We'll take the timeout. A couple minutes to go here in the fourth. C.S. Davidson looks to continue its run in 2A football. That's pretty scary. Our Caring Hands. <laughs> Close captioning presented by Caring Hands Home Health. Your family's needs are our top priority when they're in our care. Man, the students here at Bishop McGinnis, they, they take the outfits for real. That's a villain. That was the saddest looking joker I think I've ever seen in my life. C.S. Davidson goes back to work on the ground. Nice tackle in the backfield on the toss. Good stop there by Junior Saunders, one of the starters, and this running back is one of the JV players. Saunders has shown himself up, though, pretty well tonight. Again, took a kickoff in the first half and got molly -wop basically as soon as he caught the football. It's a big word there, Mark. Thank you. I know. I've been working on my vocabulary. Here on a full night, temperatures in the 60s. It's amazing here in Kernersville, just like the running game for... Andrews, who gets outside, stays in his bounds and knocks through a man. Whoa, we got a late tackle and now a little scrum. It's okay. No flags. We're going to keep playing. Keep that clock moving. Andrews is fired up, isn't he? Taking the defender out of bounds with him. Breaks a couple tackles, a little face mask miss there as well. But look at the stiff arm several times. Takes Saunders out of bounds with him. The effort there. So a third and short here for Davidson. All the backups in now in the second half. Led 57-0 at the break. Here's the toss. And that's short, setting up fourth down. Good pursuit by this McGinnis defense. I did a really good job at the point of attack, too. Stopping that run from getting outside, sealing it back in, and not allowing Andrews to square his shoulders right away. Had to hesitate and then try to get up field a host of villains was able to get there and corral him. Nice job setting the edge. So for the third time tonight, the punting unit is on. This is Liam Carnero, whose oldest brother, Lucas, kicks at Western Kentucky. Good kicking family. It runs in the boots. Runs in the boots. Carnero. It's going to be a nice little punt with a fair catch. Oh, wait a second, fumble! Oh, he hangs on to it. So Isaac Ross comes in to save it. We'll take the timeout, final break of the night. Bishop McGinnis gets the football when we come back.
Welcome back, where the Community School of Davison is up 57 to zero. Guys, one of Coach Albert's goals every year is to play until after Thanksgiving. And in talking to him this week, he revealed that he is shamelessly a huge Hallmark Christmas movie guy. This newfound love started when Albert got sick with COVID and was up one night feeling really under the weather and sat up and put on a Hallmark Christmas movie. And he said, it just made me happier. Ever since then, he records everyone and his friends even bought him a Christmas movie mug, guys. I love a good Hallmark Christmas movie. I'm thinking of the Great North Christmas, the Night Before Christmas, the White Christmas. Those things keep me up at night, man. They're really good. What do you watch before Christmas? I, I stick to the more traditional ones. You know, the Elf Grinch who stole Christmas. Yes. Well, hey, well, hang on. Yes, he stole Christmas. The animated one with uh, Benedict Cumberbatch is really good. Very good point. But I, I'll tell you what, TJ wears that like a badge of honor, and he should. Because his team responds to his Christmas dreams. Yes. And here's Davidson looking to make a deep playoff <laughs> run. A little bouncing and dancing there. That a Rocco will be short. Much better running though from Rocco in the second half. Well, it's been a byproduct of what they've done offensively. The offensive line has really gotten it going here a little bit, able to move some of these defenders off of their points, has allowed Rocco in this running game to find some holes to run through. We have a helmet issue for Ropko. Where's the sticky glue? <laughs> They're just going to pull him off the field. Probably the better option. Want to thank the athletic trainers for both teams to help make these things possible. And that'll allow Dylan Bourgeois to check in. We? There was another Bourgeois who was one of the cheerleaders. I don't know if they're related, but I did hear the name earlier tonight. Oh. I'm assuming they're related. But you never want to assume. Yeah. You know what that does? It makes the score 57 nothing. That's what it does. <laughs> Third and short. Ross on the ground. That'll be a first down. And a nice run. That's the longest run of the day for Bishop McGinnis. Ten yards. Noah Watson on the stop. He sees a run up the middle. Look at that. Breaks a tackle. Hangs on to the football. You can see... That defense of Davidson trying to rip that football out. Nice job to hang on to it. Move the chains. That's a riddle tractor first down. Ross. Nope. Quarterback keeper. Whoa, Juke. Waterfield. He's got an avenue. And give him 15 yards. Nice run by the quarterback. Very nice run. Just getting out on the edge. Fakes it. Fools almost everybody. Picks up a huge first down. Now, this is something Bishop McGinnis can take for next week. Yeah, how about that? A little sidestep action from your quarterback. That's some elusiveness in the running game. That's the sixth first down of the night for Bishop McGinnis. A couple of those on this drive as the ball boy takes a wide right to get off the field. <laughs> Back to Ross. Oh, boy. Timber. Ross it's going down. Three. That's Greg Jones springing him down. Spoke into the backfield, makes a nice play on the running back. Shed a couple tackles and had nowhere to go that time. That is never fun as a running back. Mark, you were an offensive lineman in your day. How do you protect and help out your tailback? Well, you block for him. That'd be the first part, right? Uh, but it's just about being tenacious and understand he's working just as hard as you are. You got to handle your business up front. Yes, Richard has it. Especially for an undersized offensive line. Two starters out tonight, Caleb Martin and Xander Longcar. And now a third and 10 coming up. We have an injured player down for Davidson who looks to get back up. That's Gordon Anderson. And now we will officially stop the clock to check on Gordon. Oh, yeah. Classic case of the hammies. Yep. Kind of get crunched underneath that pile sometimes, right? Good news. Gordon looks to be okay. But to continue that thought, Evan, realistically, you got to understand your, your guy in the backfield, those guys are working just as hard as you are. You just got to keep plugging away. It's tough. I mean, you're constantly hitting another another guy every single snap. And when you're an undersized O-line, right. you how do you work. scheme up yardage? Because you're not going to win well, off the line. You've got to do it by technique. And you gotta, you got to outsmart your opponent, essentially, and outwork them in that way. Here's the third and nine, officially. Bishop McGinnis with six first downs tonight. Want to make it seven. Quarterback movement. Waterfield. Kind of an awkward slide as he fell five yards short. 
Fishstall on the stop. I like Waterfield though, out of the pocket. I do too, and you can see where there's where there's some, not just athleticism, but the potential there, right? I mean, he gets out in the open field, runs well, gets downfield, is shifty, obviously. We saw him break a tackle on the last third down attempt. Alex Waterfield, who only played in two games last year behind Jamison Graves, the quarterback. This might be the last play for Bishop McGinnis. Oh, give it to him. There you go, Ross. That's a first down. Line judge gives him the first. That, a nice, tough run. Talk about the offensive line. How do you help your running back move that defensive front backwards? Change the line of scrimmage as it were. Good push at the point of attack. And that's as easy a run as you're going to find, just straight up the middle. You don't get hit until you're close to that first down mark. That's a riddle tractor first down, making tall grass short. So for the third time tonight, McGinnis is in Davidson territory. Oh, here we go. Ross gets a block, and he gets eight yards on first down. Keep this thing moving here for Bishop McGinnis. See if you can hurry it up just a little bit, maybe put some points on the board before the clock runs out. Isaac Ross, who did not run the ball last week, he, he's up to 55 yards rushing. Spotlighted him as a linebacker in our opening as a player to watch for Bishop McGinnis. Back Looking to runner. the ground for carry 46 of the night. Ross is churning yeah, his legs like his life depends on it. And he will, does he get the first down? He's still not down though. I think the line judge wants to rule him forward. It sure looks like it. Okay, third and schmedium. Half a yard, right? Third and inches. By the way, that's 56 plays for just over 60 yards for Bishop McGinnis. This has been the best drive though. A couple of first downs mixed in. Move the ball well. Have one of your best players in your linebacker, Isaac Ross. Toed the rock a couple times. Bishop McGinnis, who will head to Carver next week for league play. And Davidson will host Mount Island Charter as there's what could be the last first down of the game. We want to give a special shout out to the GM of our local station here, Allison Aldridge. Her son, Rich Taylor, plays football on the team. He's number 19 for Bishop McGinnis. And Allison, a big supporter of our efforts. It's great to see her local high school being on TV tonight. Yeah, absolutely. We, we really do love coming out to all these different campuses and high schools and showcasing these kids, having the opportunity to be on TV and hopefully get a look. A lot of them, it gives them a chance to play at the next level just because they had one opportunity to be spotlighted during their high school games. And there's Ridge Taylor. More importantly, we got a great tour of the chapel today. Beautiful facilities oh, here absolutely. at Bishop McGinnis. Ropko goes back to it. And that'll wrap things up tonight. C.S. Davidson, who has not lost a league game in five years, that streak continues. What a dominant effort to open conference play. Uh, really, the, what else do you say in the first half? They were all over the place, offense, defense, special teams, a complete win in the first half so that their starters could rest here in the second half. Just had a chance to we'll take, take the whole time out. Come back with Hannah Brady in the winning interview. C.S. Davidson takes care of business for our Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week.
Coach, a dominant performance. How did you like that win tonight? That was exciting. Kids played hard, played well. We got a lot of the young guys in, so it was a good win. Good win for the team. Talk to me about the resilience of these players behind you. Well, um, they've had a tough schedule, and, and, and you know what? They worked real hard this week in practice, and uh, you know, we had a good performance tonight, so uh, you know, they played well. I have to ask, what Christmas movie are you watching tonight? Oh, uh, ooh, that's a good question. The Hallmark movies aren't out yet. They're not out yet, but um, I don't know. I'm going to go to my Hallmark playlist and see what I have on there right now. I have a lot. So. <laughs> well, congratulations on the win tonight. We're going to present you with this trophy for being tonight's Friday Night Rivals Our winners. Congratulations. Yeah. Enjoy the win. Back to you guys. Now, that's how you celebrate right there. Movies are for next time. Trophies last forever. Do we tell them there's a Hallmark channel? Look at that, C.S. Davidson, man, living it up. Let's talk about tonight's player of the game because there were so many options, Mark. We gotta go with the coach's son, right? We gotta go with Mr. Albert. Oh yeah, here's Brandon Albert taking over with four touchdowns. I mean, just a dynamo offensively, really attacked. A little bit of a slow start, but after that got going and found the end zone often, including again, one of the better plays we've seen in a while, just disappearing behind a bunch of tacklers, shuffling his way through the defense of Bishop McGinnis and punching it in for the fourth time tonight, as you see there. Just an excellent candidate for our player of the game. And guess what? He's also the West Shore home play of the game, coach's son, Brandon Albert, because this man couldn't be stopped. West Shore home, America's most admired home remodeling brand. Oh, we talked about that play already, and just look at him touching, oh weaving back and forth. <laughs> I mean, Seven broken tackles. It, it was incredible to watch, because you and I were up here in the booth thinking, well, he went down at some point, right? And then just pokes out of all that mess in the middle of the field and is still making guys miss. And really, you have to watch out for this team. If you're looking at two-way ball, this is a team to watch throughout the state. They are as deadly as they come. How about tonight's Linder Turf and Track scoring summary? Linder Turf and Track, your choice for Kubota, Kubota Construction and Agricultural Equipment. Clearly, I don't know how to ride a, uh, a Kubota because I don't know how to say it. In the Greensboro area, come visit our brand new location on McConnell Drive off I-40. Pretty impressive first half, and the rest is what you expected. Yeah, just a dominant first half. What else do you really say? This is a team that is well coached, executes well, does what it can, and puts its players in the best position to win. And tonight, they executed at full capacity, came away with a massive W on the road. We want to thank Capital Metals and High Point for the plaques and trophy you saw Davidson lift, Cook Reynolds for those end zone views, and Mountain Fried Chicken for that great pregame meal. Finally, to tonight's high schools and their admin for support of the Carolina Classic Fair Game of the Week. Coming up next week, 7.30, September 22nd, the fair is around the corner, and the Reagan Raiders, they host the Glen Bobcats right here on My 48. For our talented crew, thank you for joining us tonight. Dominant win for C.S. Davidson here at Bishop McGinnis. Little league action. It's finally fall. It's finally league play, and it was all Davidson tonight. We'll see you next week for Glenn and Reagan, but for Hannah Brady and Mark Covert, I'm Evan Budgervich. Drew D. Mark Antonio, our director, Lori Bates, our producer. We say good night from Kernersville. It was all Davids. The world was simple and slow, learn right from wrong, work road to road. There was never plan B, just a path I'm taking. Breaking on through on the road I'm making. I knew one day I'd get my shot. So here I am to give it all I